Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today, I'm going to be sharing things that I see in the skincare industry that I would consider to be red flags, meaning that if I see a brand promoting a product with these kinds of claims, I'm immediately skeptical and hesitant to buy it. My sister actually sent me a video just like this by a creator here on YouTube named Lauren May Beauty, and I thought it was an awesome idea and I wanted to do it with skincare instead, so I wanted to make sure I gave her credit and I will definitely list her video below so you can check that out. All right, let's jump into it. All right, number one is anything that claims to be clarifying, pore clearing, pore clarifying, clearing, anything like that. So products like this are obviously usually designed for oily, acne-prone skin and those that have really clogged pores. So if you have a lot of blackheads, whiteheads, you're susceptible to breakouts, these kinds of products are targeted towards you and me. I do own some products that have claims like this on the label or even in the title of the product, and they're great products. So this is definitely not to say that any product that has this word on the label is bad, but I do have to be very careful because a lot of products like this tend to have ingredients in them that are designed to dry out the skin to absorb that excess sebum. And that's not going to be a problem for everybody. I know that there are a lot of you that watch my videos that don't have any issues at all with skin sensitivity. So products like this, this may do exactly what they're designed to do without any issues for you, and that's great. For me personally, as you guys know, my skin is really sensitive, so I just have to be super careful with products like this because anything that's designed to dry out the skin can end up giving me really severe barrier damage. Next is anything that claims to control or fight breakouts and acne. I feel the same way about products like this that I do pore clearing and clarifying products. These are obviously, again, designed for those of us that have oily and acne prone skin. And while they may not have ingredients that are meant to dry out the skin, they often have active ingredients that are targeted at fighting breakouts and high amounts of some of those active ingredients can end up being really, really irritating. Benzoyl peroxide is one example. That ingredient destroys my skin. But sometimes products like this have ingredients like benzoyl peroxide in addition to ingredients that are designed to absorb excess sebum. So that, um, oh my gosh, my skin. That's just an automatic no for me, it just doesn't work. So I have to be really, really careful when I'm testing out products that have claims about acne on the label. And actually a lot of the times when brands reach out to me to send PR and they ask my skin type, I specify that yes, I'm acne prone, but I'm really, really sensitive. So I would prefer not to get anything that's specifically targeted for acne because I have my tretinoin for that, my spironolactone. It just, it gets iffy. Next is anything that claims to be filled with both botanical or plant-based ingredients. So many brands are using claims like this these days. I'll see things on labels like 96% plant-derived ingredients, and it's like, oh my God. Just because an ingredient is plant-derived doesn't mean that that ingredient is automatically better for your skin. There are actually a lot of plant-derived ingredients that can be really, really irritating on the skin. For example, essential oils. I can't even tell you the number of products that I have looked into that claim to be plant-based, plant-derived, whatever. And I'll flip over the label to look at the ingredients list and it's loaded with irritating essential oils. And that for me is a no. I've talked to you guys about the fact that I am definitely more open to testing out products that have added fragrance or maybe like one or two essential oils if they are more towards the bottom of the label. But there's a really big difference between that and a product that has like orange peel and lemon peel and all these peels at the very top of the label. That I just know is a recipe for disaster for my skin. So if you're able to tolerate products like that, that's great, but definitely don't get sucked into this whole botanical BS. That says nothing about the efficacy of a product. It's just a marketing claim. Similarly, any product that has chemical-free or non-toxic stamped on the label, first of all, Claims like this are entirely unregulated, which means that any brand that uses claims like this, non-toxic, no toxic ingredients, no nasties here, any brand saying things like that has made up their own definition of what toxic in a beauty product means. And that's a problem. I've seen so many brands post lists of toxic ingredients that they refuse to use in their products to let us know that it's okay to buy their products 
we can feel safe with them, when in reality, so many of the ingredients on that list have been proven to be safe for use in cosmetics below certain thresholds. It's fear-mongering without scientific proof at its finest. Second of all, the word chemical does sound kind of scary. It's like, oh, I don't want chemicals in my products because at least for me, when I hear something like that, I think of something like cleaning chemicals. Like that's where my mind goes. And I think that's true for a lot of people and why they started to fear this word in beauty products because who wants bleach in their lipstick? But chemicals that are used in beauty products that again have been proven to be safe for use in cosmetics are not going to be the same thing as chemicals in cleaning products. Very, very different. And I think that is obvious when we really think about it. But again, there's a lot of fear mongering around this word. So I think people just get sweeped up in it and forget to pause and reflect on that. Also, I feel like a lot of products that claim to be completely chemical free aren't even good because these brands have forced themselves into smudge, smudge? such a small bucket of acceptable ingredients that they only have a few things to choose from and then the products aren't good because they can't use the good chemicals that make good beauty products that are safe to use. I prefer my beauty products with chemicals in them. That's just me. Next is anything that claims to be extra glowy or dewy or radiant or luminous, which we do see from time to time with serums and moisturizers, but I would say more so with sunscreens and especially tinted sunscreens. Don't get me wrong, I love having skin that looks really fresh and glowy, but there's a fine line between that and greasy and looking like a disco ball. So I have to proceed with extreme caution with any products that make claims like this because a lot of the times I'll end up looking like a greasy disco ball. I'm just so ready for more complexion products that are somewhere in the middle. Like, no, I don't want to look dry and matte, but I don't want to look super greasy either. Like, why don't we have more in the in-between? I feel like we only have one or the other from so many brands and I'm like, the middle, we're missing the middle. Second to last is actually a red flag because it's excluded from the product label, not included. And that is any product that doesn't disclose the amount of an active ingredient that is the main ingredient that the brand is selling that product on. So for example, if a brand is selling a glycolic acid toner and they don't tell us how much glycolic acid is in that toner. Brands don't have to disclose this information to us. And I totally understand that a lot of brands choose to do that because they want to keep their formulations confidential. So I get that. I respect that. But at the same time, if I'm trying to purchase a glycolic acid toner and I'm looking at two products on a shelf and one tells me the amount of glycolic acid and the other doesn't, I'm going to go with a brand that does. While using products that have the highest amount of active ingredients like that are not necessarily going to give you better results, there are certain percentages of those ingredients that have been proven to be efficacious. So the point isn't to get the product that has the highest amount of glycolic acid. The point is to make sure that the product you're purchasing works. And while there, yes, are brands that want to keep their formulations confidential, there are also brands that I believe do that because the product doesn't have enough of that ingredient to really make a big difference in the skin. So that's why they don't tell us. And my last red flag when purchasing skincare products is a super high price tag. I am immediately skeptical of any product that's super expensive. There are so many skincare products out there that have shockingly high price tags for literally no reason. There are just too many amazing affordable products out there to spend $130 on a moisturizer. And there's a lot of products that aren't necessarily super affordable and like a drugstore sense, they may be a bit pricier than that, but again, they're not $130 for a moisturizer. There is just no need to spend that kind of money on a product like that. There are absolutely skincare products out there that do warrant a higher price tag and are worth that higher price tag. For example, I feel like a lot of skincare devices such as red light therapy, those are always going to be expensive, but it's worth the money. I love red light therapy. I actually have a video talking all about it and showing you guys my results. So I'll make sure to list that in the description box below. But that is one example. Or if it's something like, let's say getting a tretinoin prescription, that is a proven ingredient. It's a gold standard ingredient. It's worth it to spend a little bit more money on something like that versus 
a moisturizer that has some silicones and glycerin and hyaluronic acid that you could get at the drugstore. But I think you guys already knew that about me at this point. I am not interested in a high price tag unless it's a product that really deserves it. And with that, we have made it to the end of the video. Those are all of the skincare red flags that I wanted to talk through. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know if you would like to see a video like this for hair care. I would be totally down to do that. And if you did enjoy the video, please don't forget forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing those things. Your support means the world. Thank you for watching my videos. I love the freaking heck out of you guys. Make sure to stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days. But until then, as always, I hope you have a great few days.